Hey, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby, and today I'm gonna be starting another thriller reading vlog, which I'm very excited about. It's been a minute, you know, since I've done a thriller reading vlog, so I'm going to be reading three pretty new-ish thrillers in this video, but before we do jump into the books, I wanted to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is HelloFresh. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how excited I am to be working with HelloFresh. Like, they're honestly one of my, like, dream collaboration sponsors because I am a huge fan of HelloFresh. Not only because HelloFresh recipes are so freaking delicious, but I also love the idea of getting to try new things with food. I love that HelloFresh features produce that goes from the farm to your door within less than a week, so you're guaranteed to be getting the freshest items. I love that you save time and money and stress, and they make it so easy by sending you these simple cards where it gives you like step-by-step -step instructions on how to make everything, especially for somebody like me who doesn't cook super often, and sometimes I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing in the kitchen, and it can be very overwhelming, especially trying to make new dishes that I've never made before. That's that's why I love HelloFresh because they give you every ingredient that you need so you're not, you know, wasting any product. Like sometimes when you go to make a new dish for the first time, you use one ingredient and then you like never use it again and it just sits in your fridge forever. But that's what I love about HelloFresh is that they'll send you exactly the amount of portion that you need of something so that nothing is wasted. I also think a little fun fact is that HelloFresh is up to 72% cheaper than going out and dining out at a restaurant because dining out at a restaurant can be so expensive these days, but this kind of makes you feel fancy just being at home, you know? It's really awesome that HelloFresh helps you stick to your food goals because they offer different kinds of meals like veggie, pescatarian, fit and wholesome meals that makes it easy to stick to your goals. And it just helps you save so much time if you're not the kind of person that enjoys grocery shopping like me or meal prepping. I feel like that takes so much work and so much time and this just makes your life so much easier. They also have 50 weekly options of like for what's for dinner so that you can pick from different meals. You're not gonna be getting the same stuff all the time. And they help you eat more sustainably because HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal kit company and almost all of their packaging is recyclable. This week I decided to make these firehouse cheeseburgers with my dad. I actually ended up making them myself and it was so easy to make them by myself Like not gonna lie. I was kind of nervous because you know, as I said, I don't really cook a lot by myself I'm usually cooking like with you know, my sister or my mom or my dad But I actually ended up making these by myself and they were so easy and so simple to make It only took me about 30 minutes and the burgers actually turned out so good Like these are some of the best burgers that I think that I've ever had because they were so flavorful My dad also really loved it. He kept asking like wait, what was in the recipe? What was in the recipe because he really wanted to know mm -hmm. so that that we can remake them sometime because they were really good. <laughs> yeah, be sure to go to hellofresh.com and use my code GABBYREADS16 for 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. 16 free meals? What the heck? That's a lot of free food. <laughs> Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the books. So the three books that I'm going to be reading during this video include Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. This one is the book troop book club pick for the month of April so we're going to be doing a live show towards the end of the month. This one is about these nine different strangers who receive this list of names that have their names on this list and they don't know each other and they don't know how they're all connected. And then it's about how like one by one, the people on this list start getting killed and they're trying to figure out who's the killer, what's going on. It's said to have very, you know, Agatha Christie vibes. And then I'm going to be reading All Her Little Secrets, which this is the book that I'm gonna be reading with Kayla for her book club, The Literally Dead Book Club, um, later this month as well. And this one, it just says, it's about a black lawyer who gets caught in a dangerous conspiracy after the sudden death of her boss. And then lastly, I'm gonna be reading Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. This is one that I just checked out from my library, even though it just came out. Like this book just came out at the beginning of April, I'm pretty sure. And this one, just the inside flap has the most like interesting premise. It just says, Emma can't sleep, check the windows. It's been like this since her big four zero started getting closer, lock the doors. Her mother stopped sleeping just before her own 40th birthday. She went mad and did the unthinkable because of it. Look in on the children. Is that what's happening to Emma? Why can't she sleep? And like, uh, it sounds so weird. This cover is so creepy. Like, I'm a huge fan of this cover. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed. But anyways, these are the three books that I'm reading for this video. And how exciting to have the first reading vlog in the house, you know, in the new place. So yeah, let's cut to it, shall we? Hi, hello, good morning. Or should I say good afternoon? Because it's about 
almost three o'clock in the afternoon. But I wanted to let you know that last night I started Nine Lives. I only got about 80 pages into it. And I will say so far, uh, I don't know, the first 80 pages, it's starting a little slow for me. I feel like right off the bat, we're following a ton of characters. You know, we get introduced to nine characters right off the bat. I mean, something that's nice about this physical copy is that right in the front of this book, they have a list of all the characters so that it's kind of easy to like flip back to that just to kind of see, you know, <laughs> who we're following at the time. I also do have the audiobook checked out, so I am listening to the audiobook while following along in the book, which is helping me get through it because honestly, it's kind of slow. The writing style is not my favorite because he's doing this thing where there's just like huge dense paragraphs of like information and not a lot of things happening in each chapter. We're just getting a lot of like information dumped on us about these characters and their lives and I'm not really feeling attached to any of them. So I mean that's how it is so far. Also it's kind of interesting like the only interesting thing about this is that there's this list right and it's like a list of nine names on it and every single person that's on this list is receiving this list of names in the mail like that's just anonymous and like there's no other information on it it's just the list of names so it's kind of creepy and then things start happening when one of the people that is on the list gets killed and so now they're like looking into it and investigating and i think something that's kind of interesting is that there's an fbi agent who is on the list and she's one of the characters that we're following in this book so I don't know, like I'm intrigued by it. I'm not obsessed, like I'm not loving it, but I feel like this could have potential. But I also am worried that there's gonna be too many characters that I feel like the plot twist won't be as effective because I'm just gonna be like, who the fuck is that? You know, like I don't wanna get confused with who all the characters are. So I'm taking really good notes. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna spend some time uh, out in the backyard today. It's actually my mom's birthday and we just got done doing some like painting and having a nice breakfast and doing all that. So I think I'm gonna go outside and try to read some more of this this afternoon. just a little after four o'clock but i wanted to give an update because i've just been sitting out on you know in the backyard reading for like the last hour and a half and i've made some good progress i'm now on page 206 the story is definitely picking up like i think it's getting really interesting i am very curious to see like where this is going and i don't know why um i had assumed by you know this cover and like when everybody talks about this book they compare it a lot to you know and then there were none by agatha christie and so i had assumed it was going to be a situation where these nine people we're all gonna be going to like an island together and then they were gonna start getting picked off one by one. Like I thought it would be more similar, but it's actually just like these nine people are like living their own solo lives in the world and then they're getting picked off one by one and it's like the FBI is trying to figure out the connection of like why these nine people are being targeted which is interesting but i don't know why i assumed that it was going to be a situation where the nine people were like together in the same place so it's kind of different from what i was expecting also there was something that happened that i wasn't a huge fan of because they mention uh you know one of these characters detective sam he's like a huge agatha christie fan and so he mentions how and then there were none originally had a really um shitty terrible title and he says the n-word like in the audiobook twice in that chapter and i was like completely taken off guard i know my friend uh, ashley actually just read this and she mentioned that in her instagram story and i was like why even if they are mentioning another book or something it's still so inappropriate and could be avoided and it's just unnecessary so so i was kind of um upset that that was included in one of the chapters i don't know i think it's so weird too because some of the audiobook is different from this physical book I've noticed. There was one chapter that it was a really long chapter in the physical book and the chapter was really short on the audiobook. It's like they cut out like half the chapter in the audiobook, which was very strange. And then there was one thing that was glaringly obvious that I noticed. Um, it was on page 156 
um, the characters in the physical book, he talks about how they watched the movie Boyhood um, with his friends and how they talked about the movie, which he loved, but he barely tolerated it. And then he said it reminded him of his own childhood and feeling left him feeling depressed and irritated. That's like what it's saying in the physical book. And then on the audiobook, it said that they saw La La Land and it was talking about like Ryan Gosling playing the piano. And I was like, listening to the audio because I got so excited because like La La Land is one of my favorite movies of all time and I was like trying to follow along in the book but they were talking about boyhood in the book which I do like the movie boyhood too but it's like so random I'm like why is the audiobook so different at parts than the physical book like I was thinking maybe you know like maybe if this was a book that originally got published in the UK I don't know like maybe there's some kind of country difference there and they like changed the movie based on like what's more popular in that country but I don't think so because like they're both American films and I just don't understand like maybe the audiobook was read based on an ARC copy of the book and then they ended up changing some things before the final book but like either way I think it's so weird when the audiobook has slightly different things than the physical book I just like it throws me off so much and that's something I've only noticed ever since I started you know listening to audiobooks while reading the book physically I feel like there are too many characters like just being real like I do think there are too many but also it's not as hard to keep track of as I thought it would be especially with like having that list at the beginning of this book is very helpful because I can just kind of flip back if I can't remember exactly who we're talking about. I like having that list at the beginning but also we're following the same characters enough that it's like once we get back into their chapters like I'm easily able to remember where we last left off so like I'm not disliking how many characters there are like I think it's just fine. It's about like just after four o'clock in the afternoon so I don't know we're probably planning on eating soon like eating dinner for my mom's birthday so I don't know if I'm gonna be uh, finishing it right now How's it going? It's about 10 o'clock at night right now. It just hit 10 o'clock and um, yeah, this is like my first night clip in this room so I'm still kind of trying to figure out you know like the best angles to get some decent lighting at night and I feel like so far this is doing pretty good. But I decided to lay down a little bit early tonight because I'm hoping to finish nine lives. I'm on page 250 at the moment. So I actually only have like 70 pages left. So I should have no issues finishing this tonight. And I might actually start on the next thriller that I'm hoping to read for this video just because I'm feeling super productive today. You know, it's, it's honestly, it's been a couple of days since I've, you know, read anything. And so being able to bust this book out so quickly, it's just making me feel so productive and so good. So I might just like immediately jump into the next thing after this. But yeah, I don't really have any, um, you know, changes of opinion. And I don't really know. I feel like so far there hasn't been anything like too shocking in the plot. So I'm hoping that these next 70 pages will really bring it for me and just surprise me. Like, I don't know, I'm really hoping to be surprised by this ending because that will really determine my overall rating for this book and like how I feel about it. So let's hope for the best. It's been about an hour and I'm sorry for the weird like lighting in this room right now I'm still trying to figure things out, you know, as I said, but I finished 
nine lives and you know because this is a book troop pick for the month of April I don't want to go like too in depth with my thoughts on this because we're gonna have a whole live show talking about this book towards the end of the month. I'm pretty underwhelmed by that ending. I wasn't a huge fan of the way that this book ended and this book just didn't really do anything for me. I feel like Peter Swanson really thought he was like doing something profound with this and honestly I feel like this feels so inspired by Agatha Christie that it's like, why even bother? Like, just read Agatha Christie. I don't know, I guess this book just isn't exactly what I was expecting it to be in more ways than just one. I don't know, I'm kind of sad that I have once again another Peter Swanson book that just didn't really do it for me. Like, it didn't really live up to the hype and that sucks. I feel like his last few releases have just been, you know, huge disappointments for me. I mean, last year for the book troupe, we read Every Value Break and I was also super disappointed by that book. And then his other previous release, Eight Perfect Murders, was also a book that I really didn't like and that kind of sucks. I feel like this book has really similar vibes to Eight Perfect Murders. It's kind of that like pretentious almost kind of like writing where it thinks that it's like really clever and really smart but it's just not as clever or smart as it thinks that it is and you know we're following nine different characters in this book and it's crazy how you don't give a fuck about a single character. Like there was not one character that I was like super invested in but it's definitely a miss for me but because the night is still young i mean it's a it's about just a little after 11 o'clock right now i think i'm just going to start all her little secrets next because this is another thriller i have on my tbr <laughs> Good morning, how's it going? So last night, I'm excited to let you know that I got a decent chunk into all her little secrets. I got up to page 104, so you know, we made a small dent last night. I feel like I didn't explain to you what this one's about, but we're basically following this woman who works as a corporate attorney and she's actually like sleeping with her white boss. Right at the start of this book, like literally in the first chapter, she walks into his office and sees that he has a gunshot wound to the head and they're saying that he committed suicide and like there's this whole thing. But the thing is that when she walks in and she sees him shot in the head, she just decides to like flee and she runs even though she has like no idea what it's about or like what happened to him but her first instinct is to like not get involved with it and like not call the police and like not be the one to report it so she leaves. But the company is kind of like acting super weird about the whole situation and it's kind of like giving her a lot of red flags with like what's going on. I don't know, so far the vibe is actually reminding me a lot of The Other Black Girl, which is a book that I read last year for the book troupe. It kind of gives me the same vibes just with, you know, her being the only black woman in the office and there's like a lot of white people and sometimes they can make her feel very uncomfortable with their comments. It's kind of giving me like that kind of energy so far. There are some, um, you know, like flashback chapters that take place in 1978 and I'm trying to figure out like how that's going to connect to the present day storyline, but at this moment in time, I'm a a little bit more interested in the present day storyline so like some of the flashback chapters that are taking place in the 70s are kind of like slow for me but there aren't that many like I think there's only been like two or three flashbacks so far. I'm also kind of surprised that I'm enjoying this as much as I am so far just because it's unusual for me that I read thrillers where you're following an attorney or like you're following someone in that kind of field because usually these kind of thrillers can feel not like boring to me but like usually when you're following someone in a position like this it's almost like the detective point of view you know what I mean where like you're following someone who has this job that's very not uninteresting but like I don't know I really like reading about you know like psychologists or like different things like that psychiatrists in this type of thriller but usually in thrillers like these I don't love when you follow like the lawyer or the attorney or the detective like those jobs just kind of seem very mundane and kind of like boring to be honest to read about but I am enjoying this a lot and I think it's because of the unique situation that this character finds herself in like, yeah I'm hoping to read a lot more today I'm actually I don't know I'm hoping I could finish this today to be honest I'm actually getting ready to go into town with my sister and get groceries because we haven't done like a grocery run yet <laughs> at the house. We've just been kind of eating whatever my parents have here, but we do want to like get groceries for the week. You know, today's a Monday. It feels right to go and get groceries today. <laughs>
I just wanted to give you a quick update because I've gotten, you know, some good reading done this afternoon. I'm on page 234 now on chapter 27 and I'm officially on to part two of this book. And this book is really interesting. I feel like, I don't know, for my particular taste in thrillers, like this isn't something I would usually pick up on my own, I guess, because like the attorney and like lawyer talk in this book, like some of it is a little bit boring in my opinion, but also I'm really invested in like what's going on because there was something going on towards the end of part one that I got really interested by and so I'm curious to see and like right at the start of part two also there was a moment in the plot where I was like oh shit and I had to like reread to make sure I just read that correctly but I'm like okay so it seems like the story is really picking up and you know as expected this book is it does have a lot of really great social commentary on things like you know what it can be like for someone to be the only black person working in an office full of white people and the way that you know her white co-workers are talking about you know the protests that are going on and they and it's like the typical you know kind of racist bullshit like the way they just kind of like voice their opinions over her and talk over her it's all very frustrating to read about you know as it should be i'm still not super invested in the flashback chapters that we've been getting but we did finally learn at the end of part one what the flashback chapters mean and like how they're significant so now it's really helping to tie the story together which i appreciate the audiobook for this has been super engaging like the audiobook is definitely keeping me invested in this book i really like the way that the narrator is narrating this audiobook so but yeah anyways it's almost five o'clock now and so i'm gonna take a little bit of a break i'm gonna eat some dinner with my family we might watch something and then later tonight i'm hoping to finish it because i don't i don't have too much left i have like a little over like maybe like 150 pages left together the heck I don't know if it's just my copy but like almost all of these last pages are all stuck together Good morning, it is the next day, and I'm excited to let you know that last night I did end up finishing all her little secrets, and the book was good, you know? It wasn't like a new favorite for me or anything. I feel like I'm probably gonna end up giving it around like a 3.5 out of five stars, but I really enjoyed it. And you know, I feel like this book was more of a legal thriller than something that I usually read. You know, as I was saying earlier, like I don't really read a lot of books that follow from the point of view of like an attorney or somebody that works with like the law in that way. So for some parts of the book, those parts kind of felt a little slow to me at times. And also like with some of the flashback chapters, like I could have done without so much of them, but I do realize like by the end of the book, what they were contributing to the story. But for my personal like taste, I was more invested in what was happening with our main character you know, in the main, like, present timeline that was happening. I'm glad that I was able to stay engaged throughout the entirety of the book, which is rare for me when it comes to, like, legal thrillers like this. And there were a few, you know, reveals in this book that I thought were very surprising, and I was just, like, so disgusted by, you know, what was going down at the end of this book. I mean, as anyone would be. Yeah, I enjoyed the book, and um, this morning I'm here at one of my, uh, like, local independent bookstores just because I have to film a couple clips for a book reel because I'm doing this book reel with Libro for independent bookstore day so I just need to film some clips inside of the store and yeah I just had to drop off some library books I'm just gonna kind of go around and do a few things today I also might swing by and get coffee at one of the local places here or I might get a frap yeah so let's go check it out it's it's raining really hard today as well and it's supposed to be like thunderstorming and like lightning in these next two hours so like we'll see Just wait. Mm, wait 
for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. So I just walked out of Safeway because I was like getting a couple groceries and things, and then I saw this at Safeway, and I was like, um, yes. Yes, and I just bought it. This is like one of those really nice like time magazines where they're like super high quality and they have like really glossy photos in here. Uh, like BTS is like literally on the cover and it's like the whole freaking magazine is about them. Stunning and beautiful this is like, I am obsessed and I just want to flip through this whole thing and read the whole thing. And yeah, I have no regrets. So like, I was just like, um, what? It was just staring at me when I was in the checkout line. And I'm like, okay, yes. I love that V is like front and center in this photo, like stunning. So yeah, anyways, I bought it. <laughs> hey, just got home from all of the craziness of the morning and I did get a frap that I put in the other room, but I'm kind of torn over which one I want to start next, you know, because these are all books that I'm very interested in reading. Um, I actually did start reading Insomnia like right before we left the apartment. So I'm about, I'm only 18 pages in, but um, so far I'm feeling like it's just okay for me. But also this is a library book. So I feel like I do want to read this and get it back to the library soon. So I might just read this one. But also I do have the audiobook checked out right now for Shiver. So like that's also kind of making me want to pick up this one because I have access to the audiobook. So usually I can get through books a lot faster when I have the audio. Then also, oh my God, I am just dying to get to this hidden pictures arc that I have. Um, this one goes on sale in May. So I was hoping to read it either, you know, pretty soon here, like right before so that I can actually review the book before it comes out. But also I might just end up saving this for spring flingoween. So like, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to try to read some of Insomnia and if I'm not feeling it, then I'm just gonna jump to one of these other books. Well, it's been a couple of hours. It's a little bit after four o'clock in the afternoon right now, but I wanted to let you know that I read up to page 124. I'm finally making progress. I feel like this book was such a slow start for me that I considered DNFing this several times <laughs> because it took me so long to like actually get invested. And I don't know if it's just because my brain like has trouble focusing sometimes when I have like stress or anxiety because sometimes without the help of the audiobook, like it really takes me a long time to like focus and actually get invested in the story but now that I am invested it's reading very fast and I think this story it's interesting you know because we're following this woman named Emma and she's getting nervous because she's going to be turning 40 soon and the reason why she's nervous is because her mom like went mad after she turned 40 and she like never slept again and so she's like afraid that like she's gonna have the same thing happen to her that happened to her mom and like that's why it's called insomnia I guess because it deals with you know her having some trouble sleeping and now you know her 40th birthday is approaching and in each one of these chapters it's kind of like counting down the days until her 40th birthday so like at the beginning it'll be like 12 days until her birthday and she starts to like have some sleep trouble and honestly like this is one of my biggest fears like low-key because I do struggle with insomnia and like the idea of it getting to be so bad that you like literally can't sleep and then you like start to question your own sanity sometimes because you're not getting enough sleep and you start you don't really you know you start to like lose your hold on reality because you start to like you know dream when you're like awake and you know just the whole thing like everything gets fucked up when you can't sleep you know it's just not a good time. This is like a legitimate fear of mine, like my insomnia getting so bad to the point where I start to feel like I'm going insane. I will admit the beginning, like the first 50 to 70 pages or so, I thought it was really slow. Like this is a very slow start and it feels very repetitive at the beginning just because, you know, you're following this character as it's like counting down the days to her birthday and it's just kind of slow and like not a lot was happening. We're just getting the characters set up, you know, like she has, you know, children, she has this family, she has a husband and her and her husband have this very like kind of almost toxic relationship where you feel like they're probably 
gonna end up getting divorced because they are just not happy and the way they communicate with each other is just not great. But yeah, the beginning was very slow. I will admit it was very boring. I almost DNF'd it, but then somewhere around like the 70 to 80 pages, some things started happening in the plot that I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting and it's kind of creepy. There's also like something happening with her kid with drawings and like oh my god that's like one of my favorite tropes in like thriller or horror books where there's like a kid that's like drawing creepy shit and you can't figure out why like i love that shit so much and so now i'm like super invested you know i'm like 120 pages in now and it's just it's reading super fast now that i'm like invested in trying to figure out what's going on my friend katie has been doing some reading sprints over on patreon this afternoon so i've just been watching those while i'm reading and it's been a good time like i don't know i'm, I'm excited though because i thought for sure that i was going to end up dnfing this at the beginning but then i'm glad that i pushed through it because my friend Brittany actually just recently finished reading this and she was like when you get to the ending you have to message me because it's crazy and that's exciting for me, you know, because Sarah Pinborough, she's the same author as Behind Her Eyes, which is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. And this author, Sarah, she's kind of known for having these bizarre, crazy, out there plot twists, you know, like her, her plot twists are, you know, some people don't like them because they're so ridiculous and out there, but it also has me like even more excited to see where this could be going. So yeah, anyways, that's the update. I'm invested. I'm excited now. And I'm hoping that this can live up to like the expectations that I now have for where this can go. Like, I hope it's kind of crazy and wild and maybe it'll be as good as Behind Her Eyes because I haven't enjoyed anything from this author since Behind Her Eyes. Like, I'm kind of worried that she might be like a one-hit wonder, you know? So I'm hoping that this one is a winner for me. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? It's actually the next morning. Um, I didn't end up filming any other clips last night because I was just kind of chilling out in the main room with the family, but I was continuing to read Insomnia and I actually got a really good chunk of the book done last night. I'm all the way up to page 248 now, so I only have about 70 pages left and oh my gosh, this book was just so engaging. Like it was so hard to put down last night. I was just so invested in what was going on. Because I'm reading this like all with my eyes right now like my eyes just needed a break after a while so I ended up putting it down and I didn't finish it last night but I'm planning on finishing it today because I only have these 70 pages left and I am just so curious to see where this is gonna go this book is doing like so many more things than I thought it would be doing like it's just going in directions and I'm just like what the heck I don't know I'm really invested and I'm like so excited because I feel like this is the most excited I've been about any of the thrillers that I read in this vlog. Like, I'm really excited to see where this one's going. Just because Sarah Pinborough, you know, like, she's so random sometimes. Like, you just never know where she's going with the plot twist. So, like, I'm just genuinely so curious. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get the chance to read this one today because right now, this morning, I'm actually going to be going golfing with my friends, um, Johnny and Austin. I've never really gone golfing before. I mean, I, I did some of the, like, top golf stuff in Vegas. And I've done, like, mini golfing and stuff like that. But I've never done, like, real, actual golfing on a golf course. So, this will be a first experience for me. I'm trying to keep with the, uh, you know, trying new things that I've never tried before in the year of 2022. So we're just like going to go with it. Hopefully it'll be a fun time. Um, but then later today, this afternoon, we're going to go back to our apartment to try and deal with our furniture situation. If you saw my moving vlog, then you know we still have kind of a furniture situation going on at the apartment. So we're going to try to deal with that later this afternoon. And then I don't think I'll get the chance to finish reading this until later tonight. But whenever I do get to it, I'm so excited. This book is just so freaking good. Goodbye. Hello, what's up? Good morning. It's the next day. I'm sorry that I didn't really update yesterday about 
what was going on but i went golfing with my friends yesterday and it was so much fun like i just had a really great time it was really fun to be able to like drive a golf cart for the first time and just kind of like experience golfing even though i kind of suck at it like not gonna lie i'm much rather the kind of person who would rather just go to like you know the driving range or whatever it's called when you just like shoot or when you just like hit the golf balls like back to back to back because then because then i can really like work on my swing as opposed to like having to go out and like chase the ball everywhere and i definitely like hit the golf ball into the water like three different times and just lost a bunch of golf balls but i mean otherwise it was really fun like i would definitely do it again and i just love spending time with my friends and afterwards we went and got a bite to eat at one of our local favorite like sandwich places and it was just like a really good afternoon and then we went over back to our apartment to load up all the furniture into my dad's truck and luckily value village did take all of our donations so like hell yes value village is a real one um last night though when i got home i had this weird thing where like it felt like something was in my eye and like i had when we were out there golfing i felt like dirt got into my eye because one of the times like one of them would swing and they would kick up a bunch of grass and dirt and stuff and i felt like something got in my eye when we were golfing but then i just kind of like ignored it and i didn't want to be like touching my eye with my contacts and you know ugh. and then after we were back at the apartment my eye felt really irritated again but i didn't want to be like touching my eye again because you know we were at the apartment and i had all this stuff on my hands and so i let it go for like a really long time and then by the time i got home yesterday and i took out my contacts oh my god this right eye was flaring up so bad and it hurt so bad that i ended up going like to bed to lay down last night at like 7 30 and just putting like a hot towel over my eye because it really hurt to even keep my eye open and it was such a freaking nightmare of a situation and it was just like the worst and i think rachel thinks that i got a little like scratch on my eye or something and so I slept for like 12 hours last night <laughs> and now thankfully this morning I'm feeling a lot better with that eye but like oh my god what a weird ass thing to happen it hurts so freaking bad um but luckily this morning it's feeling a lot better I was just like laying in bed last night and somehow I actually got the audiobook checked out for insomnia last night which is so cool because I put it on hold when it became available at my library but then it said I had like a three week wait or something and I was like oh I'm not gonna get in time and then somehow the universe was like oh here you go here's the audiobooks that you don't have to read with your crusty ass eye and so i was able to listen to the last like 70 pages of this book on audio and i finished insomnia last night and it was freaking wild there was like one plot twist in this book that i wasn't the biggest fan of like i don't know i thought it was like a little obvious but then there were also some things about this ending that i was like wait what and it definitely like clicked things into place that i was like curious about from earlier and i don't know i just had such a good time with this book i do feel like the ending of this book it is a little ridiculous it's not quite on the scale as like behind her eyes with like the level of ridiculousness with the twist but it is up there you know it's like something that would probably be a little bit harder to predict <laughs> i don't know i thought it was a really good time like this is probably the most fun i had with a thriller out of all the thrillers that i read for this video just thought it was really unique you know really interesting i liked the idea of insomnia and like not being able to sleep playing a big part in this main character's you know feeling like she's going insane kind of thing i liked how she was kind of her own unreliable narrator in a way and i liked the complicated relationship she had with her sister throughout this book and kind of like the lack of trust that they had between each other because of everything that happened in their childhood i don't know i thought their dynamic was really interesting i thought all these characters were really interesting i liked the complicated relationship that this main character emma had with her own children and how that kind of progressed throughout the story like, i don't know i just thought it was really well done and even though i wasn't the biggest fan of the reveal at the end just because i thought it was like a little obvious i was a really big fan of the the other stuff that was happening towards the end that i don't want to spoil for you because there's some really interesting things happening at the end of this book and it's exactly the kind of ridiculous thing and twist that you would expect from sarah Pinbro at this point so like i don't know i had a good time with this i'd probably end up giving this like four out of five stars but it's definitely the most exciting an interesting thing i think i've read this week out of these three i also did for the most part though really enjoy all her little secrets i only had a few like little nitpick things about this book but for the most part i also really enjoyed this and then nine lives ended up being such a disappointment and such a bummer which kind of sucks i do still think i'm probably going to end up reading shiver in between right now in spring fling ween but for the interest of time and getting this reading vlog out to you in a good amount of time it's just going to be these three books for now so yeah out of these three books you'll have to let me know your thoughts if you've read 
any of them and what you're thinking about them or if you plan to read any of these now. I'm very excited because I do have the live shows coming up for these books so if you are curious um, the Nine Lives live show is going to be on April 30th which is um, a Saturday and it's going to be at 10 a.m. PST and 1 p.m. Eastern Time so you can look forward to that. I'll probably have the link available down below if you want to save the link and then also I think it is confirmed that we're doing the live show for all her little secrets on Kayla's channel. I'll put a link down below if there is a link or I'll put the time down below if there is a confirmed time but I'm really excited to discuss uh, both of these books like I feel like they do have a lot of great discussion involved with them. Thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with a new video. <laughs> Bye!